Stop by to interact with the community and I every Friday night at 8 o'clock for live stream Fridays. Welcome trolls. <laughs>
or just very, very close to Earth flying by, or it's debris, right? It's three or four pieces of debris. Just luckily, I, I was able by chance to, to catch it like that. It, it could be. See, it's just this big um, fireball as it comes close to, this is Jurgenstock, by the way. Oh, guys, um, good news. Anyone that wants to try, um, this, I used Energizer, by the way. I last four hours with these suckers, just four of them. And I got eight of them, and it's four AA batteries that go in the infrared camera, and I'm able to film for eight hours. So here again, we don't see it tumbling, right? I've been catching objects, I see them tumbling. Well, this is lit up and it's going by. So we do see a difference in um, each object as it's going by. This is, we're in the Pleiades. You guys see that beautiful um, star cluster? It's just incredible everything that's going by there. So here again, it looks like it's in front of Pleiades, so it'd be closer to Earth. And we get to see it leave and go further away as it goes down. I like seeing the trajectory and angles of the way they're going by. It's pretty cool to be able to see that, the differences. Now check this out, guys. These two are really close to each other, and I think they collided. And now let's see it again here with a red filter over top of it. See how there was some breaking up there? Debris, either because uh, it's just maybe the debris around each of the objects that collided, but there was definitely, definitely a reaction there as these objects went by. So these objects were actually probably pretty close, definitely pretty close. Here's one coming in, going straight down to Beetlejuice, and it looks like it's going to smack right into it, which is pretty cool because it's exciting. You don't know what's going to happen. You could catch this amazing event, but whoop, it went behind Beetlejuice. And I was able to see that. So I'm trying to find out whether they're in front or behind in the constellations or not. So this was not even in the constellation um, or it was just, you know, I'm sorry, it was in the constellation and it was far behind Beetlejuice. So we zoomed up close to take a look at that object as it's going by Beetlejuice and you'll see it, it goes behind it. Then I'm gonna show you an asteroid or meteor that goes in front of a celestial object and you can see how it dims out the object so that you can really see them interacting. But here, no change in Beetlejuice and this object went by. Here's a really good way of seeing it, really good way of seeing it. So it is something actually uh, that could be even flipping around, but of course it's on fire. Very hard to see what the shape is. Same thing as the UFOs, right? So hard to see any shape. Everything just looks like a fireball fireball out there. And um, that's, I think that's the mystery of it all. This is really cool. Uh, while watching uh, an asteroid flipping <laughs> around in space, we could see a light, an explosion nearby it as the other object is passing by it. Pretty cool. Here's, um, an object what do we have here approaching oh the, yes this is the one that passes in front of the star so we're just below Beetlejuice and here's another um, asteroid or sliver probably still big enough there it's going in front which I believe and you can see an interaction of the light flickering of the light whatever as it's just in my line of view going across the object back in Pleiades because I caught a lot during the month of March in Pleiades one of my favorites too, right after, uh, right before the big, uh, the two big tumbling asteroids. Look at this, guys. This is not a small object. It's um, in front of Pleiades, where I saw it going by, and it looks like it's coming from our end, it doesn't it? And it's going out further. This is one ginormous object. That that is pretty big, definitely pretty big. Love how I was able to get the light here using a red filter and artificial light to bring out that dark object uh, infrared camera. It had had to have been pretty far away for me to have had a hard time to get some light um, on it for whatever the reason because of course we're, we're using an infrared camera. So some of these asteroids and meteors or whatever celestial objects have low or high albedos. 